With the NBA season upon us and the enormous amount of player movement that happened, I'm here with our NBA experts, Evan Abenstein and Kiva Schneider, to give us some off-season grades. Having added uh, Chris Paul to an already stacked squad, Evan, what grade do you give the Rockets this offseason? Uh, I'll give the Rockets an A- minus because they already improved uh, what was a league-leading offense or a top three offense in the league. So they add Chris Paul to that, to James Harden already. And then you, what I liked about what they did most was they added a lot of defense to that team. That was the question last season. They were a bottom uh, 15 team in defense. I think they were rated 18th in defensive efficiency. And uh, they added Luke Richard and Bob Mute, who is top 10 in defensive plus minus among power, power forwards, and PJ Tucker, who was traded last, um, last trade deadline for two second round picks to the Raptors, who clearly saw that he was an important piece. Yet they also gave away Patrick Beverly, who was a star defensive and a crucial defensive aspect to their defense last year. And without him, you know, it's really going to struggle. You know, how are they going to guard people like the Clay Thompsons and like the Steph Curry's you of the world? You got Chris Paul. You got a 10-time All-NBA defensive player. Clearly, like, I would, I would rather have Chris Paul than Patrick Beverly. Pe Beverly's a little pest on the floor, but it's Chris Paul. I agree that they got better. I give them a B. You know, I think that they, I agree, they improved. You know, they had a league-leading offense last year that was really impressive for everyone, and they only got that better with Chris Paul. But I would, you know, the only reason I don't give them an A is really because they didn't end up getting Carmelo Anthony. You know, I agree with that. to That's compete with reason. the Warriors in a seven game series, you need to have Carmelo Anthony and you need to have more than just Chris Paul and James Harden to lead your offense. And I really just think that Carmelo could have given them that last push to beat the Warriors in the, or to compete with the Warriors, sorry, not beat them. And I just think that they just, they're just a little short this offseason. I would have given the Rockets an A also if they got Carmelo. He was that one piece that they needed and they just missed out on him. Well, from the West to the East, uh, Kiva, what would you give the Brooklyn Nets in terms of a grade? All right, this is a little out of left field, but I'm going to give them an A-. minus. I think that they gave away their entire future in 2013 when they traded away all of their picks. Their 2014, 16, 17, and 18 first-round picks for Paul George, or for Paul Pierce, KG, and Jason Terry. Traded away their entire future. And now this season, they finally started to add some kind of basis to build upon. You know, they got D'Angelo Russell, who was the 2015 number two overall pick, and the 2018 first round with the Raptors. Now, D'Angelo Russell hadn't done well in the past, but he was on, a, he was on the Lakers, where he clearly didn't get along with Nick Young. And I, he I was think that Russell, that Russell trade made, automatically gave the Nets a, at least a B offseason. I, I rated them as a B offseason, but that Russell trade, they got a top five prospect from not even two years ago. He was the number two yeah, overall and I pick. Think, I think that the situation he was put in in Los Angeles really overshadowed him and his capabilities as a basketball player. And I think that when he came out in the media with his issues with Nick Young, I think that really just undermined him as a player. It definitely didn't help. But I don't think that the LA market or the atmosphere around there really hurt Russell's game. I think that this is just, that didn't help, but this is just a fresh start for Russell. Again, a top five talent. This is what the Nets needed in order to have that potential to have a star player. Yeah, I mean, I think they have no picks to get there. It's a restart for D'Angelo Russell, and I also think it's just kind of a baseline restart for the team. You know, if they can build around D'Angelo Russell, you know, they also signed... I, I gotta disagree there, because they brought back a lot of players from last offseason. Yes, they brought in Mozgov and Damari Carroll and Alan Crabb, but they brought back a lot of players like uh, Sean Kilpatrick yeah, no, and I'm not Spencer saying, Dinwiddie. In no way am I saying that they're going to be a, you know, 20 to 25 team win this year or next year or the year after that. I'm just saying that they've started a base, which is something that they... They've just been the laughing stock of the NFL for the, since they made this trade, really. And it, they just have no way to get back to a competitive team without starting somewhere. And I think D'Angelo Russell is the perfect start for them. Well, from teams to individual signings this offseason, which one really stood out to you so much that you gave it an A+. Plus? My, oh, my, go for it. I'll start, I'll start off. Uh, I went with Paul Millsap. And that's because Paul Millsap is literally the perfect star in the NBA. He's not a superstar. He, he's better than an all-star, though. Okay. He, he's a great defender. He can, he's a great playmaker. And that's a, I think that's what the Nuggets needed. They needed For a the secondary record, playmaker. Since 2014, Paul Millsap's year-over-year -year stats have declined in field goal percentage, three-point percentage, rebound, steals, and blocks. Doesn't change that. He he's is still no an longer that season. player that people expect him to be, that he was on the Hawks, that player that could put up 25 points and nine rebounds. He's That's never been not, a 25 points per game scorer. He's been. This is 
I, they give him a three-year contract, and yes, it's at thirty million a year, which is a ton of way money, overpaid. In my but opinion. it's only for three years, and that third year is a team option, so it gives the Nuggets a way out in case. So they get the first two years of Millsap, who's yes, he might be declining a little bit, but he's clearly still an, yeah. a star player. It's a great signing for them, and I agree. Um, but my A plus really goes to Jeff Teague and the Timberwolves. I think that what the Timberwolves did this offseason was special. I think that they were the only team to go from a subpar team or a not great team to a team that can truly compete. But that not, that's not because of Jeff Teague, that's because of Jimmy Butler. But I think Butler. it is. I think Jimmy Butler combined with Jeff Teague and Taj Gibson and Jamal Crawford, those four signings alone could be four starters but on don't any you regular think that's team. that's too much? Too many people who need the ball in their hands in order to be effective. No, I don't Jimmy think Butler so. Jimmy Butler needs the ball. Jimmy Andrew Butler, Wiggins, need, uh, Wiggins okay, needs Andrew, the ball. Okay, first of all, Towns Andrew Wiggins ball. and Carl Anthony needs the Towns. Ball. Okay, Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns both need to adjust to a new role in this offense because they are not the only. Well, either way, it was a great NBA offseason. And coming up next, I'll be joined by NCAA experts Manny Tobe and Jimmy Longo, where we'll discuss the bribery scandals that have swept over the league. Stay tuned.